that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. And delivered him to four coordinations of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God. And when her would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Group thyself, and bind on thy sandals, 
And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and was wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the orange gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Now, and then Peter came to himself. He said, Now I know of a certainty that the Lord has sent his angel, and that delivered me out of the hand of her, and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. Well, we realized Peter being one of the apostles and the one that had been told by Jesus to go out into the world and to preach the gospel. There was something that we could take note of. First of all, we have to realize being a child of God, we're going to have an enemy. And the enemy is going to try every way he possibly can to destroy us. And he's on his job. He's going about up and down through the earth seeking whom he made the way. He's on a mission. But another thing, it's almost completed. We said it before, we'll say it again. We're in the 11th hour of time. And when the comes 12, it's going to be finished. Those that have believed upon the Lord, received him into their lives, are going to be that number that's going to be called up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall they ever be with the Lord. But the sad part is, those that have not received the Lord are headed for a destination where there's Weeping, there's gnashing, there's torment all the time. Some people say that's in the days, but there's one thing I look at when the Bible teaches us that one day with the Lord is a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. But then we know that the Lord He's not reneged on his promises. The promises still stand true. He suffers long with us. He gives us plenty of time. He don't rush us. He don't make us do anything. He just gives us the opportunity to realize that we take heed to the opportunity he gives us we may say this off too, but it tells us one thing in particular. Our ears are not put on the side of their head for nothing. You can find that in the Bible. But one thing about it, they were put there for a hearing. Because it said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Many are turning the Lord out. They rejected him. Many said, I've come to a conclusion. They ain't no God. Well, maybe not to them. But after a while, they'll renege that, and they'll confess before him that he's God. We know that the Lord is going to be fulfilled. And it's going to be the happenings that are written within the Word of God. You know, God didn't lead us into darkness. He brought us out of darkness into light. If we're walking in the darkness, we'll stumble around and we'll fail too. But the Bible said that men were lovers of darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. We know that many things happen at the night time, but now 
it's rich down into the day. The hatred, the mistrust that's entered the hearts of so many that they have come to do destruction and they're laden or they've been led by the devil. God is not a God of hate. God is a God of love. And I could notice here, the church had concern. Peter was facing death. But there was one thing about it. Somebody was praying. You've heard the song, somebody prayed for me. I'm glad they did, aren't you? Somebody prayed for us. The prayers moved God on his throne. He reached down, gave us the opportunity to know him, to get acquainted with him. You don't get saved and start running. You get saved and slowly be patient. Day by day, grow in the Lord. I know there's some people get saved and they think they've already got it all. And the sad part is they think they know it all. But they don't. I'm still learning. How about you? I'm still a scholar of the highest university that there ever could be. My teacher is the Holy Ghost. I'm led by the Spirit, not by the flesh. And I'm thankful. The teacher is teaching us. The Holy Ghost, the Bible said, Jesus telling his disciples that he would bring to the remembrance whatsoever he had spoken unto them. There was going to come a time they were going to need it. They were going to face the opposition. They were going to come face to face with the enemy. Many of the saints of old, biblical saints, they stood true. They made a statement. They were pilgrims and strangers. They were in search of a city to come whose builder and maker was God. John said in the book of Revelation, when he was in the vision, he saw that holy city, New Jerusalem, descending down from God out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. The church being the bride, are we looking for him? He's coming. He said he would come back. He's on his way. It doesn't matter. I mean, it may be a lapse of time. Sometimes we count things by time and by days and months and years. But God don't do it that way. God's got a different format than we got. We have clocks to tell time by. So there had to be a process in that. I had to learn how to tell time. Them hands on that clock didn't mean nothing to me because I didn't know what time it was. But I got taught to tell time. I had a cousin some time back. She called or got on Facebook with me. She said to me in a little statement, she said, I still tell time the way you taught me. I thought, well, that's good. She still remembered that. It had already passed me. I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> but she said, I still tell time the way you taught me. I thought, well, that must have done a good job. One thing about it, though, somebody taught me how to tell time. Those the long hand and the short hand let me know something and then that other little hand that speed, it speeds around that seconds, moments, and it's there. But there's one thing we have to take advantage of the time. The time that we have. The time that God has given us. We're on a time clock, all right. Our life is on a time clock. 
there is going to come a time, if the Lord don't come, we're going to leave. We're going to a journey. We're going to a place in the Lord of peace and rest. Hebrews said this, said, there therefore remains the rest for the people of God. Rest means rest. It don't mean work. It means rest. I'm looking for a rest. How about you? A rest forever, eternally. We don't spend time in that time because it's just one long day. One long day. Ain't going to be in that there because the light is going to shine. Christ is the light of that city. And it's not going to be in darkness because darkness represents sin. Light represents the Lord Jesus Christ. We may have said the statement of time, I'm glad I saw the light, or praise the Lord, I saw the light, a song. And thank God for it, that we can see the light. Not naturally looking at it and seeing the sun and so forth, but we see the light on the Word. And when we see the light on the Word and we believe it and accept it, we come out of darkness into light. We're not walking around and stumbling around in the dark. One thing about it, it don't matter how many times you've been to a place, somebody said, well, I'm going up and down that road so many times I could do it with my eyes closed. And I said, I'd like to see them try. <laughs> because they couldn't do it. <laughs> they think they know it well. Many people say this is the way. Some will say, no, it's this way. You know that people can't agree. I mean, you ask the person something, or if they tell you something, they say this is the way it was. Well, that was the way they saw it. Maybe you saw it a different way. I accepted the word of God because I come up under Sign that showed a light, and the light shined out, and I accepted the Lord into my life, and he became Lord to me. He became my master. He became the one that I follow. He's leading us into good things. The devil is leading people into bad things. We know that the people are all stirred up today. What's going on in the land? Well, it's Bible being fulfilled. In the end, we're going to see all kinds of things. Things that were really starless, that we never expected it. But there's one thing that the Word taught me. Be prepared for anything. Be prepared. Be ready. If you're ready and waiting for something, and when it comes, it don't come suddenly because you've been looking for it. I'm looking for a sudden appearance that's going to happen in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And the Lord's going to flip, come on the clouds of glory. And what's he coming for? He's coming to get the bride. We're the bride. He's the bridegroom. Here Peter found himself in a predicament. He was had chained. They, he was guarded. They thought we got him secure. He can't get away. And another thing, her was waiting to kill him. Why? Because he saw it please the people. Generally, that's what a lot of people do. They're trying to please the people. Instead of please God. It ain't my duty to please people. It's my duty to please God. And if I fail to please God, it doesn't matter who else I've tried to please. It makes no difference. The thing about it is if I fail to please God, I'm out of tune. I'm out of order. 
I'm not doing what the Word of God taught me to do. I'm not following the right instructions that the Word of God gave me. And it's, it's a critical time that many have forsaken the ways of the Lord. They've chosen the pleasures of sin rather than the blessings of the Lord. Well, there's one thing about it. Pleasure lasts but a little while. Moses rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He chose rather to suffer with God's people. He made a choice. He could have lived in Pharaoh's mansion there. It was so. And no doubt it was because he was the king. But one thing about it, Moses chose rather to live in the wild. Right, he did. I mean, when he went out, he went out because he had already slain an Egyptian. And the next day, he saw two of the Israelites sort of mad at each other. And he thought he'd take care of that too. Amen. He thought nobody had seen him when he killed the Egyptian. But another thing happened. He said, if you mean to kill me like you did that man yesterday. Moses decided it's time to leave. He got his call. It's time to leave. Pharaoh's place. He'd been there for 40 years. And it's time to go. And then he got 40 years of training. And after he got the 40 years of training, he got 40 more years. And in that 40 years, he was leading some rebellious people. Amen. They grumbled and mumbled and supplied. And all they did, they found cause or reason to mumble about. But when we notice it, Moses in that time frame was a leader, a deliverer. And who came to deliver us? Jesus. He came to bring us out of bondage. And we were in bondage when we were in sin. I know some people say that. I don't believe that. Well, that's all right in me. But there's one thing about it. They, we were in bondage and we were serving a master. And it's whom we love. It's whom we serve. You can't love two masters. You can't drink out of two cups. You can't eat out of two plates, and you cannot do that. There's one thing about it. We're eating of the good manna that comes down from above, and we know that in that hour and that time, they got tired of eating the manna. So, like one of the cousins said, it's soup beans today. It's fried potatoes tomorrow. Same old routine. I already know. Today is soup bean day. Tomorrow's tater day. Yeah. Stuck her head out the window and hollered. <laughs> Let all the neighbors know. We're living on soup beans and taters. Well, I tell you, I'm living on the word of the Lord because I find strength in the word. Jesus said... Except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. He said, you ain't got nothing in me. He said, my flesh is meat in thee, and my blood is drink in thee. I'm glad I'm eating from the master's table. How about you? I mean, he serves a good meal. You can sit down at his table and eat and eat and eat. One thing about it. I've been guilty of overeating, and I paid for it. But one thing about it, I learned, don't take the next one. You think you might want it, but if you've eaten so many, leave it alone. 
I know I have said it many times, but I'll say it again this morning. I used to love butter, milk, and cornbread. You know, put the cornbread and pour the buttermilk over it and eat it. <laughs> and one day, I already had about two bowls of that stuff. And I told Mom I want another one. She said, if you get it, you'll eat it. I got it. I ate it. And that was the last cornbread of buttermilk I've ever ate. God help me. But let me say this. I've never eaten any so much of the word of the Lord that I don't want some more of it. I want more, more, more of God's word. I want it in me. In my heart, in my mind, that my conversation will become as the gospel. That I declare the word of God as he's written. God didn't change his word to suit nobody. He gave his word. He allowed his word to come, take my sins, your sins upon him. Died in agony. Died feeling forsaken as he was given the ghost up. And there he was with a heavy load, Amen. being mistreated, beaten beyond recognition, went through all the suffering for what? That you and I could have what we got this morning. I'm happy, aren't you? I'm going to thank God. He's got a good meal ready for us. We can eat from the table of the Lord. Spiritually. We do need that soul food. And fleshly, we need that other food too. You can't live too long without water. And after a while, you need some food too. But it's important, the water part of it is important. If you don't get it, you dehydrate. And if you stay dehydrated, you know the end of it. It's over. But you come to get some said, come to get me a good, fresh, cold drink. Well, you can come to the master's table. You can do all the food that he's got set on. He's got goodness. He's got mercy. He's got grace. He's got peace. He's got contentment. He's got everything spiritual that we need. And also, he's got the drink that we can drink with it. His body being the meat, his blood being the drink. You know what Jesus told the woman at the well? She, he said, if you had only asked me, I would have given you some living water that you never thirst again. What did that lady say? Give me some of that. I won't have to come to this well no more. But she missed what was being said. She was talking to the one that could give her living water. And there's, there's a stream, there's a place. And on the, both sides of it, there's a tree. And in their seas, they bear 12 manners of fruit on each side of the river that's flowing through the midst of that city. And the Bible said, it's crystal clear. And it's pure. A few weeks ago, and if you output out a little notice, boil your water. Well, the boil was already over before I even know you're supposed to boil it. <laughs> but it didn't went for us no way. It said, be on the other side of the bridge out there, <laughs> boil your water, because it had a, a, a main pipe to break. And it was was time then, they said, to get that water pure. Well, I'm thankful for one thing. This water, that spiritual water, is pure. There's nothing in it. There's no defaults. You'll never get sick. You'll never get to, to the place you don't want anymore. But you'll desire, Peter said, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. But then, there's another thing. 
We have to have meat. You can't live always on milk. Milk is good. I'll say this. It's so good. Many times we may indulge, may overdo fleshly. But how about spiritually? Is our cup full? Is it running over? Have we got joy and peace and happiness? Have we got that good feeling that comes when we make contact to heaven? Well, when you touch your live water, you're going to feel something. And there's one thing about it. I may have said that wrong, wire instead of water. <laughs> Anyhow, if you get control of the main source, you're going to feel something. And this is real. I speak of a God that's not dead. I speak of a God that's alive. I speak of a God that has love. And that love that he had for you and me, that he showed it to us. And a lot of times people take it for granted. Well, the Bible told me this. I'm not designed to be rich, but I'm thankful for what I got. The riches of this world, if you don't use them, you'll surely enough lose them. I know I've said it before, but sin is a curse. It's a destroying of a life of humanity. It'll take you places you don't want to go. It'll cost you more than you want to pay. And one thing about it, at the end, is death. Sin does die. It will come. We'll meet our maker. We'll see Jesus. Job said, I'll behold him with my own eye. I'll see him for myself. I'll look upon him. And Job, going through the one that seemed like the worst part of his life, everything was taken away. Who did it? The devil. Somebody, people say, well, why God let that happen? He was just showing what faith that Job had. Amen. He withstood the pressure. You know, a lot of these young people today, they're pressured to do things. Some of them will do it. There's one thing about it. When you kill yourself, you sure ain't going to come back. You're gone. And so that means who the fool was, the one that, that was trying to please somebody. You know, our whole duty is to please God. That's our whole duty. If we've done everything we know to please him, I'm pretty sure you're going to be blessed beyond measure. You're going to have joy. You're going to have victory. You're going to have a time that you can be content. Paul found that time in his ministry. He found a time that he'd sought the Lord for a thorn in his flesh. And he did it. Many times until they got an answer. Amen. But when he got an answer, he found out that his grace was sufficient. Yes. He needed that thorn to keep him in line. Yes. You know, sometimes God uses a thing to keep us in line. Yes. Let us know that we ain't number one, that God is number one. Yes. We're not above anybody. Help me, Lord. In the eyes of the Lord, we're all equal, aren't we? I mean, God don't see us as man sees us. He sees us differently. But in the eyes of the Lord, I'm thankful. His eye is upon the sparrow. When that sparrow falls, he sees it. He knows it. And also, 
The Bible said that we more of them than many sparrows. You know, God's got a great love for you and I. God is concerned about us. God loves us. God is a present help in the time of need. We may be in dark places, but glory to God for the light that we can see our way out of it into the goodness of the Almighty God. And God is in our midst this morning. He's here. He's our Redeemer. He's our hope. He's our life. And he's the reason for it all. We know the devil's on his business. He's really working. But as I read this, her had already killed James. And because he saw it pleased the people, he was going to kill Peter after Easter. You know we got Easter in the Bible? <laughs> That's what it said. So there is Easter. And I thank God this morning. There's one thing we can know. Her didn't get to fulfill to praise the people because there was prayer being made. There was people praying for Peter. You know, prayer really changes things. It makes things happen. It does things you never thought about could be done. Just believe. The Bible said we can have the desires of our heart. Yeah, what we want. But James did say this. When you ask, don't ask to miss. To consume it up on your own lust. If you're going to ask, ask it in the right way, in the right manner. Not to just please you, but to honor God that he get the glory. And I'm thankful. They were praying without ceasing, and something happened. Peter was being chained. The soldiers were in him. Waiting for day he's going to be get his head cut off. That's the way they did it back then. What did David do to Goliath? First of all, he hit him right there. The next time, he hit him right here. And he cut his head totally off. He got his head cut off to take it to Saul, the king at that time. He took that head. Here's, here's that fellow that's been enticing in, bragging about what he can do. Here's his head. You know, David did that with a little stone, hit the right spot. Those know it all said he had a brain defect. Sure, he had a brain defect. He got hit in the right place. And everything went haywire. And he got his head cut off with his own sword. You think about it. God does work in miraculous ways. And God's way is the only way. It ain't my way. It's his way. I, I never found the Bible where it told me to follow anybody but Jesus. And Jesus did say this. He said, follow me. And as long as we're following him, we're going right. But if we ain't following him, we're in trouble because we're going the wrong way. And I'm thankful for the hope. But Peter couldn't, he thought he's had a vision. You know, he did have a vision one day. He was up, he would have eaten. He was hungry. And he went up on the housetop. While he was there, he fell into a trance. He saw a sheep. Knit at the four corners, let down. In the hip was all manner of beast and things. And he said, Rise and eat. He said, Not so, Lord. I'm not going to eat anything in common. I'm not guilty of that. And what happened? God had a reason. And that reason was for this there was a man, a good man. His arms had come up before God for a remorse. In remembrance of a memorial. 
of the good deeds that he'd done. And he got the, the message to send down to Joppa and inquire there for one named Simon of Peter. And when he got down there, those that came, they inquired. And Peter agreed and went with them. And in doing so, we find that he went to that man's house, home, whatever you want to call it. And while he was there, that man and his whole house were baptized, got saved, right? Amen. Miraculous thing. But Peter had just missed getting his head cut off because somebody cared enough about him they were praying. You know what the Bible says? Pray you one for the other. It's not me, O oh Lord, and only me. But, O oh Lord, help everybody. O oh Lord, open the eyes of the blind. They say I see, but they're blind as they can be. You know, there's one thing about it. Spiritually, a lot of people are blind. They're seeing things they shouldn't see because they're looking the wrong direction. The Bible said, lift up your head and look up because your redemptor draws nigh. I'm thankful this morning I can look up toward the heaven. I know I can't see out of this top this place here, but I know a man that's seeing that down through this. Another thing, he's sure in our midst. When we gather together, as many as gathered together, two or three gathered together, my name, he said, I will be one in the midst. And he is in the midst. And then the devil's here. I didn't invite him. I've rejected him. I go against him. But the Lord's present. I want it. How about you? I want to feel the presence of the Almighty. I know I've been redeemed. I know my sins have been forgiven. I know I can have joy and peace and contentment in a troubled world. Some people are in fear. There's one thing about it. God can subside, subside that fear that's in a person. He can put peace. He can bring to a point. It doesn't matter what's going on. They found they can be content. We don't have to get involved with those out there marching and carrying on and tearing stuff up, burning stuff. Lord, help me. What are they getting out of it? They're doing what the devil told them to do. Hatred. But I'm glad we're under the umbrella of love. God's love. God's mercy. God's greatness. He's a shield. He's our protector. He's a friend. Stay closer to the brother. So Peter went down to the man that his arms, he'd made contact with him. He said, they, uh, about this hour I was praying. And he got a message. Sit down to get job. And he sent Peter on the house top. They was out there and they said, Hey, Peter. Now this ain't the Bible. I didn't say it was and I ain't saying it is. But there's somebody down here wanting you. So he came down. And when he came down, they would tell him the mission they come for. They eat, stayed a while. And then they left. And they went down to that man's house. And when they got there, he had all his household gathered together. They heard a message. Your sins can be forgiven. Your sins can be washed away. And the Bible said they received it with gladness. They didn't grub it. They wouldn't hard show it. They received it with gladness. And then at that time, that whole man, his whole family, household, 
they received the power of God. They were saved and they were baptized. They were made candidates for glory because that man's good arms, the good deeds that he was doing, moved God on his throne. I'd like to move God on his throne this morning. How about you? That he'd reach right down there, that he'd take hold of that sinner's heart. And it'd be so bad that they want to receive Jesus in their life. We do it. Hate to see our loved ones suffer, but if they have to suffer, let them suffer to get saved. Right? That's for sure. I want to see everybody saved. So Peter got out of prison. You and I did too. We were in prison in the darkness, in the grasp of Satan. And the Lord come along and he took us out of there. He gave us joy. He gave us peace. He gave us something we can hold on to. I can make the statement. I made it forward. I'll make it again. When you come to the end of the road, tie a knot. And hold on. Because there's one thing for sure. As long as you've got your hand in the hand of the man of Galilee, there ain't nothing the devil can do that's going to bring you down. Because you've got strength by him. In place of body, I'm weak. But in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to be strong. I want a strong faith. Lord, I believe you'll do anything you said you would do. I don't take his promises mildly. I, I take them as they're written. I believe it. And I thank God for it.